kid hasn't wanted the island of Sodor in their living room. When it comes to children and their wild imaginations, every child has always wanted to recreate their favorite shows in their own house. And they have been able to do so using merchandise of each show. Thomas and Friends is among one of those kids shows that kids have always wanted to recreate. These kids have been able to recreate that with a plethora of different merchandise lines like Ertl, Trackmaster, Take and Play, those bathtub toys, and of course their line of wooden trains. Thomas Wooden Railway has released various different tables that have been used to put play sets on. While there have been many different play sets, the tables have relatively remained the same size. But there is a Thomas Wooden Railway table that, while not available for purchase, was created for a specific toy store. That table being one of, if not, the largest Thomas Wooden Railway table ever created. In some nation in the state of New York, towards its most populated city, right in 1466 Broadway lies the largest wooden table of all, the Toys R Us Times Square Thomas Wooden Railway table. Okay, well there are larger wooden train tables than it, but it's certainly one of the most interesting. I've tried scavenging footage for this table, or at least the Thomas section, but I barely found any. There were just too many videos about that dinosaur animatronic, so I went back in time and I broke the animatronic dinosaur. Now go record the Thomas section and stop wasting my time. Back in the 1990s, Toys R Us had decent quality stores. They then looked at FAO Schwartz, which was much more luxurious compared to them. They looked at themselves, and they were destined for change. After a new president of Toys R Us took position, the companies created plans to create their largest toy store in the nation. And they did just that by building a flagship toy store starting in 2000 in Times Square, New York. By November 2001, the store was finished. The store ended up being 100,000 square feet. This store had everything you'd ever want from a toy store. It had sections for Willy Wonka, Peeps, Candyland, various other merchandise, Hot Wheels, and this ice cream area called Scoops R Us. But it didn't just stop at one floor, there was a whole nother one, which contained large sections for Lego, Barbie, Jurassic Park, Monopoly Game, Imaginarium, an arcade, and the Thomas and Friends section. Wait, why is there someone on top of the Ferris wheel? Excuse me, what are you doing up there? Head up the escalator, go up the elevator, head straight towards the Thomas and Friends section. When the store opened in 2001, it had this classic design. Around 2011, they switched to basically the CGI version of the show. The Thomas section had mostly wooden row items, but also had sections for Take Along, Tomy, and even Lego Duplo. But of course, you wouldn't notice that at first you would notice the giant wooden railway set that's been placed right in the middle of the section. Various traction rail and roadway tracks can be found all throughout the set, along with various other destinations such as the toll booth bridge, bumpy track, and the hilltop station from the Let's Have a Race set. And of course, the three and a half inch roadway switches. These were in multiple areas within the set, most notably in this section right here. You have to look really closely though, because I wasn't able to get a high quality image just kidding. There they are, right there. What makes this so unique is that the three and a half inch roadway switches were not sold separately. In fact, they weren't even available for consumers to buy. These ones, which are the male to female ended, were featured in only two other wooden railway sets. They were glued to the table and were only sold to retailers for the children to play with in the store. This one, the female to male end, was not featured in any other playset. You may also be reminded of the six and a half inch roadway switches from the Deluxe Chocolate Factory set. Those came out in 2003, around the same time this table was manufactured, 
but they were not included within this table. This table has more mountain than tracks, so you'd need a bunch of sharp turns and connections. So there wasn't really much room for a six and a half inch roadway switch. The interesting part is right here. This is called a three and a half inch Y switch, female to male M which is weird because Thomas Winroe never made those kinds of track pieces. They would eventually starting in 2014, but we're not living in 2014 right now, we're living in 2004. My only guess is that they took an off-brand track piece and used it for the set. If you look right here, the trains that are supplied for the table have little stickers on them. I don't really know what the stickers say and I can't really read them from here, but they probably say, Hey dummy, put me back on the table. Of course, since this table was available to the public, and that only one was ever made of this, there are going to be some major changes. In 2004, the engine wash right here was the old style, but they actually changed it around 2008 to the newer version to keep up to date with what Learning Curve was producing. But then eventually, I guess a kid must have ripped off the new one, because in 2010, they went back to the older one. The yeah, kids are a lot stronger than they look. Eventually, these curved road pieces were replaced with these off-brand, sharper curves. When the table was first produced, near the roundhouse, there was a hill right there. But eventually, it got replaced with an ascending track. In summary, the table had to replace various different pieces through various different methods. Well, think about how many kids played with this table. The flagship Toys R Us store was the most visited Toys R Us store out of them all. It had hundreds of visitors every day, along with many kids playing with this train set every day. Out of all the Thomas and Friends tables in the United States or in the world in general, this table got the beating of its lifetime. It was just too much work to keep up with it. And at some point, in late 2010, they got rid of the table altogether. But whoever said this was the first version of the table? There was actually a version of the table before this one. It was released back in the middle of 2002 when Traction Rail first came out. This table did feature less terrain, but it had a lot more track. This version had a very intricate layout, and even a sending track that was going up to five levels tall going through a mountain. Other than that, the table took up all the space that it was provided, and it took it up well. And this table also used roadway track, including the three and a half inch roadway switches as well. But wait, what's over there? Is that the six and a half inch roadway switch? Let's take a closer look. So what did I do? I tried to replicate this small part right here with a three and a half inch switch and a six and a half inch switch and from my results the six and a half inch roadway switch looked more accurate to what was actually on the screen. While I can't exactly confirm it, that's probably a six and a half inch roadway switch. And if so, there are now two sets in existence that have used these items. But why would they ever get rid of this first one? Well, remember what I was talking about, how the other table kept getting ripped apart? Just imagine how bad it would have been for this table. So even though this whole layout looks really cool, it probably got a lot of pieces removed. Not only that, but it was just a bit too complex for children to play with. I mean, this is something you'd expect Shining Time Station to do. And eventually they did, in around 2004. Now after the second table disappeared in around late 2010, another version of the table took over. Now this version of the table, let me tell you, it was, without a doubt, a massive downgrade. But after dealing with kids tearing apart the table all the time, it's understandable why they transitioned to this. It was merely just two Thomas tables placed together with track on top, with just a few destinations on there. It too got pieces removed by children, and at this point, the Toys R Us employees were just fed up of taking care of it. That's it! I quit! And they just ended up getting rid of the table altogether, replacing it with an additional shelf and a Thomas ride that kids can play on. 
the ride would just go back and forth while the theme song played through the speakers. Now eventually they would bring in another Thomas table, but I think that was only for a specific event. And besides, this table was the exact same table that you could find in some other toy store. But suddenly, on December 31st, 2015, a massive change was made. One that would change the Thomas section forever. It was quite possibly the largest change ever seen to the section. You want to know what happened? The entire store shut down. No more Times Square Toys R Us. And that was the complete story of the Times Square Thomas Winroe table. Or was it? What? There's more? Is there a fourth version of the table that was made specifically for the store? Train King James on Twitter posted some images at Entertainment Junction where they set up a playset. Some of you might recognize it. Upon further inspection, this looks like a version of the Toys R Us Times Square table. It looks more like the first version, but this one looked a little different. First of all, the entire table was completely made out of clickety-clack track. All the destinations included were pre-2002, and the mountain, the main attraction of the set, looked quite different from the other two mountains that we've seen, meaning that this must be a different version. And as you can see, it also looked like you could fit it inside the little carrier that they had to hold up the table, and it showed how they replaced the table back in 2004. The tracks also look quite dirty, which means that they might have used it quite a bit already, and that it's definitely not new or a recreation. This could potentially mean that there was another table back in November 2001 when the store first opened. I don't know that much about where this came from or if this was ever used in the Toys R Us Times Square store. So if anybody has more information, please let me know in the comments below. Another thing I found was on the Thomas Wood Wiki, there were these images of Thomas, Annie, Clarabelle, and a cargo car, and they were labeled as Thomas Wood Railway Times Square Displays. I wasn't able to find much about this either, so again, please leave any information in the comments if you have anything to say. Overall, throughout all the versions, throughout all the destruction, throughout all the attempts to fix the table, the Wooden Railway Times Square table remains one of the most interesting relics within the Thomas Wynn Railway line. With its massive, sometimes ambitious layout, it remained a childhood dream come true for hundreds, maybe even thousands, of kids. Where the other tables are today, I have no idea. They could have been locked away, they could have been given back to Learning Curve, they might have even been thrown away. But the set, overall, was a great representation of what a child's imagination could do to the island of Sodor. It is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated parts of the Toys R Us Times Square store.